we up? It shows here green. 3,000. Looks like we're up and running. Good morning, gang. Upstairs again for another wonderfully, gloriously interesting glue stream. <laughs> Sorry about this. The last few days, the concentration on that video, a lot of other work has got just ignored completely, you know. I, yesterday morning, too, I told them, I, look, i got to do this. I semi-closed my door to my room. I hibernated in there. And they did. Through the day, people came and, like, tapped. And, Dave, Dave, please. Yeah, they didn't want to bother me. But, uh, I did get it done. At last, the new video's up and running. Okay. Sizing stream today. The paper we're doing is going to be for cats. It's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, paper for descending geese and evening rain. Night rain, evening rain, whatever we call it. So, I guess a sizing stream today. We have uh, 40 sheets, 20 large sheets cut in half to make 40. So, going by that calculation, I think we're okay here to get it finished in the hour and a half. I don't have to cook any size, it's here waiting for me. I cooked last night. Because I did a sizing, I was going to say I did a sizing stream. I did a sizing session last night, so the the, the glue is ready and waiting. Okay, 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 okay. Let's get going. All the stuff on the bench here. These are prints that have been sent to me for checking. Let's have a quick peek before we get going. Am I not supposed to show this? This is the Kyoto Journey number two. It's coming through from Sugusan. They were supposed to go to Ome last night, but it turns out she forgot to emboss the title of the print on them. So I'm going to have to do that as an emergency today. I'll do that downstairs while I'm in the shop. She says she forgot, but I guess she forgot. I don't know. Whatever. These are up and running now again. This is another batch from Sugasan. This is the print we call Sumida River, number 61 in our catalog. It's got uh, silver and uh, bronze. It's not silver, it's nickel silver. Bronze, they're going to go through. I've got to check them today, pull out any chitty, send them through. And then we've got another one. This came from Daychan last night. These are back in stock. This has been out for a while. This is the Dragon in Clouds. And another one with metallic pigments. This is a Hokke design. This has been out of stock for a while and it's now going back through. I'll check these today while I'm down in the shop, send them through to Ome. Well, these are the images. We've got to get these online. The images from the video. And we have a show and tell. We have a really, really nice show and tell today.
Well, the, the Hokke print, it's the same studio. It's Hokkei's studio, and Hokke learned his craft there. So yeah, the dragon, seen Hokkei dragons, seen one, seen them all, kind of, I don't know. Okay, 40 sheets of paper, it's in two groups of 20. So let's keep one group underneath, keep them warm. This should run pretty smoothly and easily today. 20 sheets, 20 plus 20, flip it, 20 plus 20, 40 strokes all together. This is the fourth in the cat series. These are reprints. This is going to be for two of the cat's prints. It'll be Night, Rain, and Descending Geese. These are reprints. It's number two and three in the cat series. I still haven't got number four up and running, I'm sorry. Best angle, I don't know. Should do it right at a decent angle. No, too much, not enough paper, too much tray. It's fairly thin stuff. It doesn't need a massive amount of glue here. I've got to keep the level of liquid in the brush fairly moderate and I've got to keep moving quickly because this is thin paper. And if I get too much water in there it just it saturates too much. Delicate balance. Have too much water in there, no good. And if there's not enough, the printers will complain by the time the paper gets to them. Not enough glue, it'll be too feathery, too much glue, and the pigment won't properly go inside. questions. What have you got? You got some prints in between size. Well, there's all kinds of stuff was made back in the day. Yeah. My first guess without knowing what kind of prints you've got there are that they were probably used, going to be used for greeting cards. Bigger than a match label, smaller than a postcard. That size was very commonly used to be pasted on a folded sheet of card or paper and then made, sent out as greeting cards. What kind of image are you talking about?
Mm, too much, too much, too much. Too much on that one. I wonder if that could have been a really thin sheet. There's quite a lot of variance in these sheets, you know. You know, I'm not sure. It seems okay. I'm going to mark that one. There's something funny with that sheet. I'm going to mark it so I can recognize it. The way that sizing went inside that one, it, it soaked in in a bit of a funny different way. So something's wrong with that sheet. today with the weather this is going to be a, not, a, not a difficult job. It's warmed up a lot now. It's over 20 degrees here. It's a rainy day, very damp. It's the best, best, easiest day to do this kind of work. Absolutely. Back when it was really cold, the, the glue would start to gel before it even got into the paper. Now we're over 20 and it's pouring rain outside. This is an easy day for this job. It's now really time, we've talked about this before, it's time now for me to get the uh, other printers here training on this job, absolutely. Because if they can't do it in this weather, then uh, they can't do it anywhere. Pipe friends are busy again. What it was the other day, was it yesterday? Thursday. I said it was the scaffolding coming down. That actually was wrong. The scaffolding is still there. This building is being constructed in a different way than people usually do this around here. The pipes you were hearing, what they've done is they put scaffolding up, then they started to build concrete forms. They've put plywood, you know, forms on both sides with rebar pouring concrete inside. And the pipes we heard the other day and we're hearing now, these are the pipes that have been holding those forms together. They poured concrete in, the forms are finished, the pipes come off and down they go. So it's not the scaffolding pipe. This is now going to be going on first floor, up to the second floor, up to the third floor. They put forms back on, pour concrete, take them off. This is going to be going on for a long, long time. The poster outside says they're going to four floors. So for the next while, any video production is going to have to happen at night, absolutely.
I don't think it's a shop. I, I don't really know. I shouldn't say because I don't know. I haven't seen the inside the scaffolding, but uh, it's an investment building. I know it was an old house that had been abandoned for nearly a generation. It was abandoned long before I came here. It only came down two or three years ago. It was abandoned for 15 years or something. And uh, it's been bought. We learned that it was bought by a Chinese investment company. So the owners are, are a Chinese land company somewhere in China. They're putting something up for, for invent. So it will be a rental property. Who knows? Someone's asking stack or separate. You know, in the traditional way of doing this sizing here, there's roughly speaking, there's two sort of systems here. One system is we do it this way. We do the stack and then hang the stack. Another option is do one sheet, hang one sheet. That means that the hanging place and the rubbing place have to be in the same room, obviously side by side. And that's an awful lot of walking around and running around. And also, when the sheets are hung one by one, my experience is they tend to dry too quickly. So doing a stack and then hanging it is sort of the normal way to do it. But having said that, there's two very different ways to do it. And Adachi and Mokohankan do it quite differently. Adachi, so I'm told, I've never stood there and watched him, but to talk to his printers, Adachi does it, he does a stack, only the top side, and then hangs it, dries it, then brings them back down, then does the bottom side, the back side, and hangs that separately. And the reason they do that is because they're devotees of having the sizing strength on the front and back of the size different. They may make it stronger on the front, weaker on the back, or the other way round. I haven't really found a whole lot of difference in doing it. Well, I haven't tested a lot that way, I can't say that. But doing it this way, with an even glue throughout the whole stack, really doesn't seem to be causing problems for us. Although, it's one of those things that could be investigated and tested and sorted out more.
Okay, here's the twentieth sheet. So this is the first half of the top side. So we're now we're now one quarter of the way through the brushing here. That's 20 sheets top side. We pull out the next 20. Going well. It's going easily, going smoothly. We had a couple of job interviews the other day. Uh, be careful what I say here about people's privacy, but I think I can speak in general terms. On, uh, what was it, Thursday, I guess? Thursday, was it Friday? Thursday, I guess. We had a couple of ladies come in to speak to us, semi-interview. I, I say interview, but they weren't formal sit-down interviews. Just a couple of people came in and spoke to us. We've got flyers up here and there. Looking, We're still looking for shop staff, people to work in the shop downstairs. So Aoyama-san tried an experiment a couple of weeks ago. He put an advertisement or a flyer, electronic flyer, whatever you call it, on a job hunt site describing the requirements. And two ladies came in on Thursday separately. One came in at 2 o'clock and one came in at 3 o'clock. They came in separately for a sort of interview and to chat with us. And we had put as the number one requirement for, this, for what we need is we said we're a shop dealing with foreigners so we need people who can work as shop staff who have a basic fluency in English to be able to talk to foreigners. I don't, I don't say fluency, I mean we didn't need an all, you know, we don't need total fluency, we need someone who can chat and talk with foreigners. And we didn't ask for anything about knowledge about printmaking or something, of course, if we asked for that we'd never get respondents. Anyway, long story short, we, we got these two people in and <laughs> the, fir the first lady comes in and she was shy, quiet, couldn't speak very well English and within five seconds I knew that this person wasn't going to be really capable of working here. But you can't take somebody for five seconds, okay, I cut out away you go, <laughs> you can't do this. So you speak to them politely, you listen and you tell and you show everybody and you walk around and you spend your 30 minutes together having this sort of semi-formal interview. You take their paperwork and then at the end of it you try and say, you know, don't call me, I'll call you in a polite, normal way or in what you can do, you know. But it's a bit frustrating because literally in the first five seconds we knew this lady couldn't do it. Okay, no reason to tell the story to insult somebody but three o'clock the next lady came in. And within five seconds, like, will you marry me? <laughs> Just, she was bright, smart, cheerful, talked rings around me. She could do it. First impressions, you know, they're useful, they're dangerous. I don't really know, you know. But when you're hiring people or, or looking towards hiring people, What would you do? Line them all up, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, cut, 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 in. You can't do things that way. You just can't do that.
So anyway, one of these ladies is coming in. She'll be coming in, I guess, next week. She's going to give us a try. So. And actually, there's another lady starting tomorrow who I spoke to a couple of weeks ago. We've been, this process is ongoing, and we are really trying to find people as an ongoing process. So uh, a different lady, not related to what I just mentioned, but somebody else came in a couple of weeks ago to chat with us, and she was sort of in between. Nothing dramatically out, nothing dramatically in. Okay, she seemed you know, capable of this. And she's starting on Sunday. Not starting as in you're hired, but she's coming in for the first of what would be a number of sort of trial dates, test dates. She's going to hang around. We don't expect her to be, be uh, functional, but she's going to hang around and watch and listen, and we can chat with her and see how it goes. So there's one lady starting on Sunday in that respect. First impressions, you know, it's really, really, really difficult. You know, I think it's it's also not, you know, the two things I mentioned, the lady that couldn't do it, it's clear she can't do it. So that's fine. In that sense, the first impression is useful. The other person who seems very competent is capable that's a bit more dangerous first impression because the person could have, you know, the behavior or whatever could be could be something different. So that one's not so sure. So in the case of this you know, light level job that we're talking about, a negative first impression is more useful than a positive first impression. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anybody counting? Doesn't much matter. I think we're okay for time. Someone's asking, why is this called sizing? I really don't know. And it goes back a long, long way. We're, it, in English, in Japanese, it's not called size. It's called dosa. The English expression size we're using, I know, if you go back to when they're doing things like gold leaf, you get a picture frame and you want to put gold leaf on it. The liquid they use to, to paint onto the picture frame to catch the gold leaf is also called size. So I think this goes back long before specifically Japanese printmaking here. And I don't know, I don't know the etymology at all. Etymo et etymology, I don't know that at all. I was going to roughly, roughly guess. We have size as in dimensions. It's obviously not related to that. We have size, we have C's as in grabbing and holding something. So maybe if we're going back in time on the roots of the word, seizing, sizing. Maybe the French, so or or the Romans. Week. 
How many prints will one sheet be made into? Each of these sheets you're looking at is going to be one, two, three, four prints. If you look in our catalog, you'll see the eight views of cat series, descending geese or night rain. And you're gonna get, we're gonna get four of them from each. And these are cut in half. I should be doing this as one large sheet, but I don't have a brush large enough, nor really the skill. So the full sheet has eight prints. And this is no coincidence. When I designed this series three years ago, three years ago, I, of course, I set up the, the size, the dimension of the prints to match the standard paper dimensions. So it's no coincidence, absolutely. We're going to get exactly four plus a tiny bit of waste around the edge. And this is the same dimensions of paper that would make one great wave print that would sit here, a great wave. So the Nishki paper that we have here, O Nishki is what Iwano-san calls it, will make two great waves or eight cat's prints. word study here. Okay, I'll be I'll have a chance to read these later. Thank you. <laughs> Is it an etymology stream today? Okay, nerdy there, we have one, two, three, four sheets left, and that'll do us for the top side. We then flip it over. I think we're okay for time.
Okay, last sheet, number 40. This brings us halfway. So we've got it flipped, covered in plastic, safely wrapped so it doesn't dry out too soon. Very nice. The board comes back. And we now continue with the back side. Now the paper is now much more difficult to handle. It's now wet. It's wet mostly on the front side. Now the difference now is because the paper has a lot of moisture now in it, I have to reduce the amount of moisture I'm going to keep in this brush for each stroke. I'm going to wipe off quite thoroughly, tip it, and here we go. We're on the back side now. And from this side camera, you shouldn't see any pooling. If you see loose liquid here, speak up because it's dangerous. I don't think it's going to happen. But if you should see liquid start to pool here, let me know. if you can see it there's a hair in the paper not mine there's a hair there you see it it's inside the body of the paper it's in between the paper layers it's visible now because the paper's wet once the paper's dry it won't be there then if we make a print with this it's going to show up inside it so you can't avoid it The paper maker should have been maybe wearing a hairnet or something, I don't know. I should maybe mark it, I guess try and mark it.
No, what ideally what would happen here, I've marked that, and then when it goes through to the printer, when I'm sending the batch of paper through to the printer, if I remember and if I make a note, tell her, look, there's one with an X in the corner, take a look, you'll see it, there's a hair. Use that for your tests. The printer will always take the, the sheets that are spoiled, whatever, put them on top of the stack. So those are the first ones that get tested on. The brush here we're using, this is a goat hair brush. It's a little bit different from the ones we use for our water, our moistening. Well, not hugely different. This is one of our moistening brushes. This also is goat. It's called Yagi in Japanese. It's a goat hair brush. This is for moistening the paper. They're usually smaller, more flexible. We don't want to be picking up a big brush, wiping, 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 and then using a we need smaller, more flexible brushes for our daily work. For the sizing work, we want this done to be more consistently, because this is a one-pass system. When we're moistening for printing, it's not one pass. It's dab water on here and there, and over time it beautifully smoothens out. So we don't need one pass, but for the sizing, single pass is what we want. So for that, a larger brush and a brush that has thicker, denser mat of hair, so it carries more liquid. So the sizing brush, did I do this one? I didn't do this one, did I? <laughs> Don't bother me. So the sizing brush and water brush are sort of the same thing. In general, sizing brushes are physically larger and they're a bit more dense on the hair. Someone says, is there a tradition that drives your tool choice? What's driving the choice of tools and materials here is the goal and the kind of prints we are trying to make are really a similar look and feel and mood to the old ukiyo-e prints. So given that, it makes all the sense in the world to use the old tools and materials if we're trying to end up with the same result. Now, having said that, obviously technology can advance. There can be maybe a more efficient, a more effective way of doing something. And in general, we're sort of open to that. I mean, whatever here, I'm using an electrically heated size bucket. In the old days, they would have had a hibachi with some coals underneath, and it would have been really difficult to control the temperature. So my skill is not so good skill as the old guys, because I just turn a switch, set it to 50, and it's done. So in my mind, that use of modern technology is a no-brainer. Of course I will use electricity for that. much technology to retain, how much to improve and expand. It's an open question and there's no single specific answer. I mean, the printing business as a whole, which is what this is, obviously, is completely different. Printing presses now, you throw a tree in one end, you get a magazine at the other end. You know, that's not our goal. So there's no single pat answer for that. We want to, to honor our own abilities. I want to keep the feeling that I'm a good craftsman. I don't want to build a machine to press a button to do the job. I am very, very happy, very comfortable. My goal is to do the job myself, not to build a machine that will do the job. It's a, it's a fundamental thing in what we do, you know. 
having said that, how much innovation and how much technological assistance do we want to use? It's very much an open question. There are prints down in the shop downstairs in our guest corner, not our own publications, but in our guest corner, there are prints down there which are made from blocks cut by lasers. We don't do that ourselves because it's just not our taste or our style. But we're not Luddites and we're not fighting that stuff. Do I consider my skill compromised because I don't maintain attention over the burner? No, I mean, not at all, not at all. I don't, we're just we're choosing our battles here. We're choosing our battles. The old guys, because they had to work with many, many more variables, they ended up having a different skill set than me. I wouldn't say they had better skills. If that's what I said, I misspoke. They have a different skill set. He had to manage the use of that burner, so that skill I don't have. Our skill sets are, are you know, they differ depending on the different tools. So no, no problem at all. If I felt that was important, I would go back to doing it that way. But I think, honestly speaking, it doesn't matter at all. The job is better served if I have a consistent temperature in this glue. He had a skill set that was shaped by the circumstances of his day. My skill set is different. I mean, in order for me to run a consistent business and have our prints go out into the market, I need this skill set to be able to do what I'm doing here with this computer. He had no concept that such a thing existed. Someone's asking, when am I going back to Ivanasan's place? Yes, I am going when? I don't know. It's not teed up yet for the next visit. I have got a lot of stuff to catch up and April is right in front of me. So I will not, almost certainly will not be going there during April. But yes, of course, that's going to be ongoing, of course. But not in April, my God. <laughs> April, April, April in Tokyo. Who can please help me? April in Tokyo, end of my life. We passed the weird page that sucked in the sizing. It was about six from the beginning. We've passed it. Oh, you're watching your time, are you? Nine o'clock <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> about that April song, you know, I guess maybe we've talked about this before, I don't remember, I never remember what I said, the, the uh, April in Paris song, you know, I read somewhere a, a story about that, it's been hugely responsible for so much disappointment, people have the song April in Paris, so they're arranging their vacations and they go to Paris in April, and I guess it's still a disaster, it's cold, it's winter, it's blustery, it's not nice, May in Paris is much better, 
Ich kann sagen, good morning, good morning. But it doesn't scan. May in Paris, it doesn't work. So we have this song that's driving every year hundreds of thousands of tourists into rain and cold and sleet. <laughs> So I don't know, is that true or not? I heard, I read that somewhere, quite a serious story about this. The Paris, Paris tourism, wonderful in April, but nobody's happy. That was Ishikawa-san, she will come and say hello in a moment. She's here printing, she's gonna be printing, uh, what is it, her paper is out. She's printing the 11th print in the Ghibli series, the one we call uh, Woodblock Pilgrimage. I say sleet, I meant whatever, just simply inclement spring weather, I don't know. I've been to Paris once and it would have been, what time of year, geez, I don't even remember. No idea. I spent three or four days there once back in my, how old was I, 22, 23, somewhere on there. chess clock. I've probably still got it. It'll be in a box in Ome. I bought a chess clock from a street market in Paris. That's Dave's souvenir. I got taken for a ride by a, a waiter in a street cafe somewhere. Never forget that. I was really a shy kid, little shy little boy. I'd, I'd had French in high school. I could not speak French. I never pretended to speak French, but I'm there in Paris for a few days. We were on a music trip. We were going to Frankfurt to a music, uh, what's it called, the big music fair that happens in Frankfurt. And uh, the boss went straight to Frankfurt. I had a few days extra. I, my ticket went to Paris first before going to Frankfurt, I guess. I don't remember the exact details. I got scammed by this waiter in a restaurant, a cafe. You know, Twenty-two-year-old Dave, really super shy, goes into a cafe. It's a hot. It must have been summer because I was ordering a, like a cold, cold drink. And I think, I don't know. I said to the waiter, I can't speak French, and I still can't speak French. I would have said some mm, con concoction like un, un limonade, s'il vous plaît, or something like this, limonade. And the guy said, and I sort of understood what he said. He said, gros or gross, or, and then small, large and small. What did he say? Gros, I can't, I don't even remember. What's the two words? Would you want a large size or a small size? And I must have said, gros, gros, gross, small, the large one. And he brings a lemonade, and I tell you, it's got to be like two liters. A, a liter, a liter and a half, two liters. I don't remember. It was a massive, it was like this giant picture of beer. <laughs> And he just brings this thing, stacks on the table, and walks away. <laughs> and the people around are all like, hee, 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 hee. Good morning, Ishikawa. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> I forget the bill. It was like a hundred times what it was supposed to be or something. A petit. Petit moyen et grand f format. Not fromat. It's format. They show you're spelling your, your French wrong. Am I going to correct your French? It's not F-R-O-M-A-T. It's F-O-R-M-A-T. <laughs> so whatever, I drank the top couple of inches. I drank the top couple of inches, paid my bill and left, you know, whatever. Oh, it's got some ding and okay, can I? Ah, so ne. ちょっと消しますいやいやいやどうしてやってくださいいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやい
Someone says, how did I learn to overcome my shyness? And then you gave the answer, exactly. Time and experience. Of course, I mean, just whatever. Time and experience. Part of it, yeah, it's funny because we were talking about this in the shop downstairs with one of the staff members the other day. I'd been telling him I was so shy. I'd gone to London when I was you know, 21 and spent the first half of the year walking around town because I was too shy to get on the buses. Because a London bus, you have to get on, you have to tell the guy where you're going, and I was too shy to do this. So I walked instead. <laughs> but the staff member, knowing me, says, come on, no way were you this shy. And I'm like, I was that shy. And I think part of it, my mother's not listening here, so it's okay. I think part of it, as kids, we were very much, you know, whenever there was people in the house, don't speak until you're spoken to. Kids were, it's almost the Victorian idea. Kids were present, but not part of the activities. You know, you go and play, you don't discuss, you don't talk, you don't do anything with the adults. Speak when you're spoken to. It's sort of how we grew up. And maybe this has a factor, I don't know, or just my DNA is what it is. I don't really know. I was smart. I had no confidence. I was really, really shy. Good morning. Oh, Taransan's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw your name there. I was thinking, wait a minute. He's either probably on the train or downstairs or... Oh, Special drop-in surprise guest, Tansa. Why are you here today? Explain to our. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ayumi-san and I, the last few days, have been working on the test sprint for the Nikko print. The Hiroshi um, Yoshida reproduction. Mystery right. day in Nikko. And so, yeah. Uh, what days was I here? Well, you were here yesterday. Wednesday, so Thursday, Thursday I was here, yeah. and we did most lots of the colors and then I was busy yesterday so Ayumi-san finished off I think Fingers she crossed. did something yesterday I don't know if finished or not I didn't and have a chance today to we're going to talk about what extra blocks we need I know so the the quote base block set for this thing is sort of ready neither of us think it's going to be you know we're going to need more as we go uh, along uh, I think or we're going to need adjustments but it's coming alive I'm so happy you know I haven't been following every step of this but it's coming alive Give us a link here, Misty Day in Nikko by Hiroshi Yoshida. Mokohankan is making a reproduction of it. This dude has carved the full set of blocks. He's done the, the key line tracing. You saw his video. Oh. And he's done the color separation. I'm just watching. And I'm so happy about this. It's good fun. The, I started the initial, I, I've got so much footage. I took too much footage. I'm gonna have to like, I'll get better at this and just knowing what to Tons actually tell When's your next YouTube video? Uh, I, started it yesterday. <laughs> I started it yesterday, but there's like a terabyte and a half of footage and like from each clip I can only use a few seconds. Whatever, I know the, there's an the expression here that we all know, and don't be afraid to shoot your babies, you know, whatever it is. The, the cut, just cut, cut, cut. There's like a 30 minute video and I take 10 seconds from it, you know, but yeah, I'm gonna scroll fine, through fine. it all, I gotta watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes time. Are you, are you following? I'm not following you, so answer up. Video when, yeah, that's the question. At some point, for sure, it will come. But I'm in no rush to do this, so I can... No, no, of course, priority is the work, of oh, course, oh. of course, of course. And those videos, they will be there for, you know, like, forever, as far as we can see. So, oh, so no they rush, better, you know, better so. be good when you put them up first. Well, no, I don't no, want no, any hiccups, like, last Don't time. prioritize rushing through it, you know. And that print is gonna be in our catalog for, you know, our lifetime. So. Someone says, what's your channel? I think there's a... I can just type it in. Well, no, it's good. The, the bots have got it. You're, you're in the bot. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a link from the Instagram. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're in the bot. Uh, oh, thank you for that. Yeah, Is so that David sure. KP? Yeah. <laughs> just helping you get used to the constant demanding questions. Where's the video? Hazamas. Yeah, not quite an MVP yet. VIP. 
a V peak vehicle. Oh, you mean on, on the stream? You mean? Have you, have the mods given you like a star or something? Or I don't know how it works. No, I don't think so. Yeah, the mask thing. Well, technically, we don't have to wear no, we're off. So, yeah. so I know there's been a, a number of instances. We're masking up here because we're in a close room, fairly close. And here in Japan, it's a transition time now. Most of us still feel a bit more comfortable like this. Down in the shop, the staff is wearing them. Lots of customers aren't. And we're not hassling them. Yesterday, there was a guy up front. He wanted to come in. And he, uh, he's going like this, looking for his mask. He said, relax, relax. We're cool with this. We're gradually dialing this down. So case by case, and the larger the room and the more outside, you know, if we were walking down the street now together, two of us, we probably wouldn't be wearing these masks. But, uh, but here in this environment, we're still in this transition period. The schools, uh, students technically now don't have to wear them. Teachers, teachers still do though, is that, the, is that the, the health regulations or is that your school's? Uh, Each school makes their own yeah, decisions. Decision. Okay. Okay. But yeah, they advise students to wear them on the trains and stuff. Yeah. We're very much in transition, this society here right now. People, it's getting better. all of us feel much more comfortable with these things rather than uncomfortable. That's a big difference, I think, for overseas. Overseas, like, oh my God, I've got to get rid of this as soon as possible. And for us, it's not quite that easy. It's sort of, you know, I'm in no rush to do this is the kind of mood here, I think, you know. It's been a long time. Now, it's been a long time, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I noticed the other day when you were doing the test printing with Ayumi, Ayumi herself is not wearing a mask. She's right, taking right. hers off. So that answers that question. Would you be annoyed if stuff don't know? No, no. We're, we're, we're cool. So if there turns out to be some a big outbreak or something coming about, then that will they change everything. But uh, there's no super peak happening here. So it really does like we're now at the exit of this tunnel and we're just going to sort of dial this down carefully and comfortably, keeping everybody you know, comfortable. We'll see. How many sheets? Uh, 20 big sheets cut in half to make 40. Each one will make four cat prints. These are the APUs. These questions have all already been asked. I'm yeah, sure. A number what, of times. What's yeah, this so, for? So, so, a number of times. So. And I was on time, I think, but now I'm running late again, so I don't know. We'll see. Doesn't matter. I can give you a hand with the. The hang, yeah, maybe yeah. do the hanging as two. Yes, 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 good. Maybe we can hang it as a two man job. Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Thank you, note for the channel there. Thank you. So the video's up. You put the video up? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, last night. So, so, so. Fantastic. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I got a couple of um, emails about one particular point there, which really kind of surprised me. And I think maybe there are people who might be on the stream, so I've got to be careful with your laugh. The end of the video. I got two emails saying, Dave, please go back and check. There's a horrible mistake at the end of the video. <laughs> that was the footage from the Twitch video? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. But it, I guess it was a mistake putting it in there, I guess. I, don't. <laughs> I thought it was kind of obvious that it was a, a, a wink, but uh, <laughs> there are people who thought it was a serious mistake. Dave, go back and, and fix it. You didn't notice, but at the end of the video, something's wrong. <laughs> Actually, I had a devious reason for doing that. Part of it's just fooling around for having fun. But there's also a devious reason for this, in that people might be passing on the link to their friends and they'd say, watch right to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Tom. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Someone's got a comment here about Matt Saxon. Matt Saxon? He's doing well. 
Mm. Is he? Because somebody else told me he died. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. They're it. saying that it was a mistake. I, I'm, okay. I was with him before. I'm not okay, so okay, long okay, ago. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I didn't follow up on that. So. Ah, uh, uh, Matsaki like sounds fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, good. When did when? How do you know? When did you last to know? Um, well, I'm doing this scholarship thing with the kumiai. Ah, okay, okay. And he did a a, a demonstration, demonstration yeah, yeah, okay, for us okay. one time. Okay. How is he doing though? He's he's mentally alert and still yeah, he, he, he's kind of a Genki guy. Yeah, yeah. He was one of the first who really helped me earlier. Really, really helped him. He's getting a bit old now. We all are getting a bit older, <laughs> but he's yeah. I'm seventy one, so he must be eighty six somewhere around like there. That, yeah. Oh, you were disappointed at the end. Yeah, I was expecting the big I pipe was, sound as I, well. I thought about that, you know, I did. I was thinking, should I cut that particular clip that's got the big crash? That would have been a good closer. I thought about that and I decided against it. I'm sorry if I failed you. I don't know. <laughs> it's all these different ideas in the mix. And I thought what I'd rather do is just close off with David picking up the mic and saying, okay, there we go with that one. <laughs> the other thing I found funny when you were doing the the Dosa demonstration. You, you picked a, a, a clip from the Twitch for doing the sizing. Yeah. And it, it was... No conversation. <clears throat> you look like a kind of kind of grumpy, kind of stern, like this is your advertisement to the Twitch. We're always... <clears throat> oh, so you were kind of grumbling. I had no specific motivation. I tried to slice a piece that had no talk in uh, the clip itself so that I wanted to do the uh, voiceover explaining what was going on. So I didn't I didn't have any specific thoughts, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not Dave though, is it? That's the point. Kind of grumpy. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, whatever. I just saw it as the uh, people who don't watch the Twitch, maybe uh, they think that Okay, 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 okay. Well in that case then it's best don't don't over advertise. Just uh, you know, under promise. Over oh, deliver, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your philosophy, I guess it works, yeah. It wasn't anything bad, it was just no, 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 a, I get, an I get interesting point. point. I get the point, so. Uh. Our guest here, our guest is Capucine Korenberg. Well, how are you doing, Capucine? <laughs> I'm not going to do my French accent. I though. think the bot needs to be updated here, so. What's he got? The one talent son hails from Wales. Have they got another bot for you, I think, do they? Or? It's fun. I can always tell people who know me from um, the Twitch streams because no one else calls me talent son apart from people who come from the Twitch. So you, I can you always. You're talking about Westerners, you mean? What do you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. People on Instagram, if they send me a message, like it's. Talent Hello, Taran son. Okay, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, you're from the Twitch, I know. <laughs> It says a lot. It's the way it's built here. It's impossible for me. Even though we're speaking English, I can't say, Hi, uh, Taran, how you doing? It's just like... <laughs> Taran Kun, that's what um, oh, Asaka, Asaka Sensei yes, calls me. Yes, that's right. But for me, never, never. N I it, never use fun. that word with anybody. <laughs> he, would say, he would say it's fine, but no. No, 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 no. Let me say good morning. Come and say hello. Talk about the regular crowd shuffling in. Oh, she's gone. She's full room. I think she's just scared. We are running late here, actually. I'm supposed to be in the next room by now. Doesn't matter. That bit, that bit will be quicker. You're right. Yeah, yeah. and it doesn't matter. There's the shop staff. Mori sounds here today. She can handle the shop, so it's okay. The, yeah, the ums and annals, they, they just, you, huh? you live here long enough, or not even <laughs> eat that long. It, most foreigners got anno and ito. Oh, they, they, well, that happens in any language, right? I'm sure. You pick it up. What is it in English? Er, ah, uh, I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. And well, Kun is not disrespectful if used in a normal environment. His, his sensei, from Taran-san's point of view, the older man, almost three times his age, is Asuka-sensei. And normally, and it's natural for Asuka-san to say Taran-kun. 
It's not disrespectful, it's just the normal word for the people in that social situation. Dave has trouble with it because he's trying to be the Canadian egalitarian. And if I really spoke Japanese as it should be spoke, I would say Taranka. Because I'm too, I'm sort of his boss and he's way younger than me. But there's still, you know, you can take the boy out of Canada. <laughs> it's not disrespectful, it's a marker. And some societies, all societies have status markers. Some it's a little bit more overt than others. In Japan there are quite overt status markers. But don't confuse it with lack of respect. This bowing thing or these markers. There's nothing to do. If anything, it's respectful in that we are understanding who we are and how we should speak with each other. So don't confuse the two things. It's the correct ethic. Yes. Having said that, you could, if you were going to b break the rules, you could use the word kun as an, as an insult to uh, somebody. Uh, and then you're going to get punched in the face. I mean, it can be used that way. You know, Somebody who you shouldn't use it to if you did. I don't know, like, like you know, college students who know each other and stuff. Is it kun, is kun the marker of choice among people in the same college classroom? I don't know, boys. I don't know. I, I think it's, sti it's still age, but the age gap doesn't have to be. It's kind of casual, isn't it? I got a friend who's like a year younger than me that I call Itakun. Sometimes. <laughs> Three left? Two. What's on the cards after this for you? What's your day? Printing? Uh, downstairs, doing running in the shop because there's no veterans down in there downstairs. And I've got prints to check, three or four batches of prints to check. Tonight I'm printing here, the next Hokusai group. Oh, that's right, I left it on Ishikawa-san's desk. She's probably, uh... Other, other wet paper? Yeah. I didn't mark it, too. Actually, I better take you. Can you ask her about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know Rei-chan won't be here today, so throw it over on Rei-chan's desk. It's a pack of, of moistened paper. Okay, now the great move. It'll be good to have Taran-san to help me with this. So uh, I'll just start the process. I'll move a few pieces and then it's easier just for me to do it than to explain to you. But they just stand by for a minute and when we move the computer, that's when we can move I'll together. I'll take any so, I know where they all go, so just, and I'll hmm. just, just stand by for a moment. The, the, the chat can explain what's going on. One camera coming down, permanently, out, that's gone. Okay, audio is going down. You won't hear us until we get the audio plugged back in in the other room. So stand by. Audio going down.
it is. I think the audio has just come back up just mm -hmm. now. The mic is right there in front of both of us. So I'll get busy with my part. If you get, you can handle the conversation. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Is Taryn hairier this time around, or is it just me? A little bit hairier, yeah. <laughs> it's the mask thing. We really shouldn't have uh, beards at work, but I've been really pushing oh, it recently. Oh, you said at work, you mean school? Ah, uh, no, school. Not, yeah, yeah. Not Mokohanka work, but... Uh, <laughs> oh my god, sound. Is it okay? Too loud? Too quiet? Well, nothing's changed, so there's the mic. I, oh, I can hear. It's a miracle. Okay. Yeah. You got me there. No beard for teachers. Uh, it's considered more professional to be clean shaven. Clean shaven. Oh. So you can have a small one, but this is kind of pushing it. And I would never get hired. No, <laughs> you wouldn't make it past the interview. <laughs> I can't see the chat at all, so it's totally over to you, Tom. Uh -huh. I, can't, I can't read it from this from this distance. So. Taryn needs to find a grey dye. Ah, oh, I'm slowly be turning into Dave. Is that it? For those who don't know, the, the stack is face down at the moment. We did the back last, so everything's face down. So one sheet gets flipped. So the top two sheets are now back to back. They go up together and they won't stick together, but in case there is some residual stickiness, it's not the front surface that would get lightly damaged. It would be the back surface. So they're going this, up back to back. With this sort of humidity, how, how long are these going to stay up there for? A day, two? I don't know, today they're going to dry slowly. We're going to seal them, we're going to close the doors, we're going to put the humidifier on, we're going to wrap them in plastic, but they will be dry by late this afternoon. Late this afternoon. There you go. <coughs> what we want to avoid is having them dry like in, a, in an hour, a couple of minutes. Yesterday was a, a clear day. I did Ishikawa San's batch of paper last night. And I, would, I wanted to avoid having it dry within a couple of hours. How is dyed hair? Yeah, you're not allowed to have dyed hair. I had a student, um, a bunch of our uh, kids do study abroad programs, and they found out that one of the students had dyed their hair while in Canada. And then they dyed it back to the normal color, but it was so they became they, they blonde found in Canada out or whatever, and then became black back in Japan. Okay. Oh, and then they found out, and there was a big like meeting and everything about it. You can't do this. You're representing still the school. Doing this? I thought Wild. that stuff had died a decade ago. <laughs> I mean, when I came here, it was a big deal. I thought it was done. Yeah. So school dyeing hair is definitely a no. Okay, but adults do it. The lady teachers in your school, every one of those lady teachers is dyeing her hair black. Dyeing hair black is not such a big problem. It's like going blonde or some color that's. <laughs> I thought that was done. Done and buried. It's a private school as well, but I guess the public schools are so. Well, I, that's kind of why people go for wild colors. As soon as they're out of school, they go, I'm free, yep, I'll free, do whatever I'm free, I want. I'm free, yeah. That's why you see pink and purple and all that. Well, Dave here, so of course, as soon as I left home, I said I let my hair go long, stupidly long, stupidly dirty, stupidly, you know, crazy, because I was finally, my mother didn't tell me what to do, you know. Japanese friend wanted to dye their hair brown and their father threatened to stop paying for their university. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> it's, it's control, that's, isn't it? That's it's wild. control. It's all about the control. <clears throat> There's stuff about this society that I really, really like, and of course, same as anywhere, the stuff that just, oh my God, you know. People like you and me, and this is 
one reason why Japan is easier for us than it is for the locals. Because Taiwan san and I can just do what we want, and no one is going to push us or force us or try and get us to line up, because we are foreigners. So of course we do these things. That was endless sort of friction between myself and my ex-wife when we were living in Japan. And she would have said the same thing a thousand times. It's easy for you, you're a foreigner. But she had to obey the rules, the social rules. And Dave is just screwing around, but she couldn't do that. Bicultural partnerships. Tough road sometimes. <coughs> Is it a quiet stream, Tonson? Not too many questions? They're all having fun with themselves? Mostly just about hair. <laughs> <laughs> How's the shop been recently? Busy? Busy, busy, busy. The, the numbers are just bizarre. I mean, just easily we're double from any previous time, before pandemic or whatever. Easily double. We're running out of stuff left and right. I'm on Yahoo Auctions. We're talking to our dealer friends. We're buying as many prints as we possibly can because all of our printers are maxed out making our own prints. So we're trying to cover by buying more for our, our antique corner. You know. I saw some of the friends on Watanabe San's desk the other day. They're really great. Some of them are. And we filter really quite well, you know. This is a bit of a, a bit of a paradox here. I, know I keep telling people like in the old days the prints were just junk, nobody cared, you know. But yet the selection we have in our shop, because they're all filtered, curated, you know. So it's a bit of a misleading thing, you know. I keep telling people it was all junk, 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 and yet we have such beautiful prints. <laughs> I was thinking with a couple of them, like, really? Dave's letting you take this? He hasn't snapped this one up? Either I've already got it or I have a better one. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> All that stuff goes through me. And if it's, a, if it's an absolute treasure. I lost one last week. You know the bird book, the Utamaro bird reproduction book that was published in Germany that we saw a few weeks ago? I have two copies of it now. The Japanese version of that came up on Yahoo Auction last week. And I stopped at eight hundred dollars, and it went from there. Is the ship selling anything at Hyper Japan in the UK? And Shop, not this year. No, I know we were there I know, three, four, five years ago. One of our staff members went over there. The experience was uh, extremely negative, both from the organization of the place what we were asked to do, the support our staff member got, it was negative all the way. So no, we are not, we weren't asked this time around. And if I had been asked, I would have said thanks, but no thanks. So no. I wasn't even aware it was still in existence, but uh, no. Not after our experience there. What did the BBC steal? It wasn't the BBC that was here, it was the British Museum. <laughs> Mongolia is a good word to uh, try if you're practicing. The Mongolia word. Have you heard of it? Uh, carving. What are we talking about? A carving practice. The, the, the green Mongolia word. You can use it if, if for beginners it's cheap. Magnolia. What, what, I said Mongolia. Magnolia. <laughs> Whole no key, so. Yes, cuts like butter. You'll never break your knife. Yep. How does it print? I've never used it. It prints really nicely for the first couple of dozen copies, and then it gums up, and the color comes out turgid and uh, and dull. This is why we we don't use it. You can get a few beautiful copies. The wood grain is magnificent. 
but you can't make extended quantities. Somehow the paste, or maybe there would be a different way of printing it, this would work, I don't really know, but in our way of printing, it doesn't work. It gets gummed up, and literally after about 20, 25, 30 copies, the color starts to come out sort of a, a matte color, a dull color. Uh, mm. It loses all its... its uh, Vibrancy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And maybe you could dry it out and come back and print some more. I don't know. Just we don't, uh, you know, it's not our style, so we don't use it. But if you're only making a few copies, you know, 10, 20 limited editions, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Have you ever seen Pokemon prints? Yeah, it, 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 you carved them, right? Well, we have, we have a, a parody of those in the shop, Jen Henry's work. There was a very interesting news item came across my feed yesterday in that Nintendo has licensed their characters to a whole bunch of Japanese traditional craft makers, as in vases, urushi boxes, lacquerware, all this kind of stuff. And there's a massive exhibition happening right now. I think it's over in Ishikawa Ken where they do this sort of stuff. There's a lot of potters and, and, and lacquer and stuff like this. I forget what it's called, but the, the, it's happening right now and it's full of really, really interesting stuff. Uh, you know those those Pokemon characters and, and animals evolved into into beautiful uh, objects. Yeah. I don't have a link, but somebody could maybe find it. It's happening right now. And when I first saw that, I thought, wait a minute, how did these guys get away with this? And I looked it up on the net and on their website. There's a little note at the bottom, licensed through Nintendo and Niantic, and uh, I, I don't know that. So like your collaboration with the British Museum. Getting the permission, doing it. this this way, yes. Oh. So. Someone's asking about the more um, parody sort of direct rip-offs, less uh, wiggle room than the ones the Ukiyo heroes and stuff you chose. You know, uh, Jed Henry does mm. like the Mandalorian yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't touch uh, those. No, I, I don't and won't touch those. fine for Jed, he's living in America, it's a different environment, different set of rules, different set of fair use rules. What happens on the ground is different than what happens here. I'm not going to touch Disney, it's not like that. Also those particular designs he made, I personally feel, I haven't seen all of them, but the ones I have seen, I personally feel there's not enough parody in them. This is just simply using somebody else's character per se. And that crosses a, a sort of an ethical line that Dave is not comfortable with here. So maybe I'm splitting hairs, and I'm really a pirate, and I'm just pretending not to be a pirate. But whatever, you got to make your your decisions on these, you know. Mm. You got to draw the lines. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So. Yeah, Jed can get away with a lot more, I think, than like if someone ever did complain I got a shop here, just, I got yeah. 30 employees you know it's just one print for him but it's yep, like exactly, it, it represents exactly, exactly, like so. a month two months of work oh that the wood bar print <laughs> yes the investment yes so my level of investment is much uh, much bigger than his we've got some of the original Ukiwe heroes prints that haven't paid back their investment yet so these things go you know mm -hmm. It's how, how it goes, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, I mean, that's what the publishing series is all about. Is, sure, sure, yeah. sure, of course, of course, same as movie makers or book publishers or whatever, you know. Of course they don't have a hit. Baseball players, nobody bats a thousand. Do the sheets get wrinkled from the clips? No, these are some soft clips. They've not got any spikes, they've got little round bits. They're for underwear. Underwear, like delicate. Mm. So, for, for delicate, unmentionable, so whatever. The sides are rounded and it's nice and soft. They, it does compress it a bit, right? Of course, of course, of course. But it's mostly on the the waist. Yeah, I know what part of the print paper mm. is going to be used here. I'm using the clip in the area that will be trimmed off later. Mm. What's the oldest print in your collection? Kind of a tricky question. You mean me, myself? Uh, uh. Oh, mid-1700s, I guess. Do you, know, do you know a specific print that you think, like, this is probably one of my oldest? I've got some books, and these have a, a strong colophon. Uh, oh. the, the Book of the Ports that I used to reproduce the Port series is 1775. Wow. And it's well known that that's what was published. That's like one year older than America. Okay, what's the time? 
9.35, okay, okay. There's no sense to sort of... Or maybe, can we do a quick show and tell right here then? I've got one item to show, and I can show it fairly quickly. Okay. What's the, what's the I mood over the there? Camera. Do you want show and tell, quick one? Yes. Okay, I thought so. We need to ask that question. <laughs> we need to ask. It's a one-off special item. How should we do the camera? Can you, okay, can I you can, play cameraman? Yeah, 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 let's do this. If I come over this side so I can see the chat. If Taran-san can play cameraman and put something here. It's going to be a single print. It's about that large here. So bring the camera closer or whatever you want. Do you know how to... So oh, there we go. The, I've got yeah, it. There's, that's the horizontal one. So. And if you leave them snug, they're, they're fluid filled actually. If you open them all the way, it falls. But if you leave it snugged up, you can use the fluid to help you look more professional. Is the Pope Catholic? Well, actually, I'm supposed to close this door too now that we have paper hung up. Humidifier goes on after this one. Yes, yeah, as soon as, as, soon as you're finished here, the humidifier is going on. The doors are getting closed. Okay, what we have here is a single print. It's published by Akiyama Buemon. In the, oh, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. We'll get a date as soon as I get inside here and have a look at it. And what it is... It's the table of contents. It's the index page, table of contents page to a large set of woodblock prints published at the time. It's a set of 36 views, uh, 36 scenes of women who represent uh, 36 eras in Japanese history. And the designer is, I think, Mizuno Toshikata. And the series would be Sanju Doku Kassen. Not Sanju Doku Kasen as in poetry, but Sanju Doku Kasen. The stream is screaming now. We're not live close to that. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. What can I do? This guy has used stupid sellotape to do this. Scissors. Can I? Do we have scissors? Hasami <laughs> Has somebody got a link to it? This series. Japanese packaging, you know. It's good. It's good it's until it's not. Easy. Okay, here we go. <coughs> better than the, uh, the other alternative. Okay, this is a woodblock print. It's Either double or but no, it's two of them pasted together. And as I said, this is the tick. Can you maybe? Oh, should I tip it up, or are you going to come closer? Whatever. I can, I can come closer. Good. Your call. Zoom around as you will, sir. We have the titles of the thirty-six prints in the series. It's perhaps going to be difficult to see it. The entire background of this thing is done in Nuno Mezuri. Let's try that. If you hold still for a second, let me try and see if I can... I've got my glasses on already. Oh my God. I'm not sure it's going to show. We have the... No. I'm trying to zoom in. Push in. Well, no. if, you, if, well, if I'm just trying to move closer. There you go. You can see have it. Have we there. got it? Have we got the Nuno Me pattern? And the calligraphy, beautifully, beautifully rendered calligraphy. What? And then this pattern, the, the seasonal stuff. We have oxidized or, or you know, metallic pigments or, or vermilion that is oxidized. Another one here, that would have been bright red vermilion. Cherries. Cherry blossoms. Yeah, just it's a full... <laughs> Year of whatever. Can get back out the whole thing. 
and the printing look at this right through to the back this is the back side absolutely staggering I'm gonna date I can't see it now can we this how's your ghost Meiji 26 here we are Nijuroku Meiji 26 right the show uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Magnolia <laughs> He's batting. That's strike two for him this morning. Uh, <laughs> so, so there we have it. You know, what would have happened was somebody got a set back in the day and the set has been dispersed and sold one by one. And here's the table of contents just coming loose by itself. And for me, just the carving. The magnificent, magnificent. Look at the calligraphy talents. Huh? Just tasteful, beautiful. Wow, yeah, it's fantastic. This doesn't get any better than this. The Firiana. So, and all the kanji characters here, to help people read this, each one has ruby. It has the furigana, the readability for each character pasted side by side. These little matters, it's all the, the full yeah. stops at yeah, the end of yeah, the yeah, sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did this cost me? I don't remember. Here, I'll do this. If you can zoom in and poke around, I'll see if I can find the auction page. These are actually not that rare. They come up now and then. What did I pay for it here? Oh, here we are. 6,327 yen. So it cost me, whatever, $50, $60. That's the auction. So I'm saying, Taransan, get a cup of coffee, please. <laughs> Shake it? No, I think there were mistakes or whatever. I don't know. No idea. You know, I can't do a calligraphy like this, but I have some sense of this. I've carved calligraphy for the past 40 years, and believe me, this is beautifully, beautifully ordered calligraphy. You know. It would have been cut by a specialist guy, I think. You know, all of us can cut calligraphy per se. But back in the day, there were men who specialized in this, especially in the production of those Sudimono prints we see, which had poetry all over them. There were specialists who would simply cut calligraphy. Just like the calligraphers as well, specialists. Well, so, so, I guess, so, 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 so. Even the design of so, the, 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 work, the work of the calligraphy on this would have been done by a special person who just did calligraphy. You know, absolutely. But the wow, brush, the can, you, can, you, if I, can you find my finger here? Can you, these cherry blossoms, look at the line work inside these cherries. We're talking about calligraphy. There's essentially no difference. Every dot and stroke here is a beautiful, look at it, look at that. Every brush stroke is a beautiful brush stroke. It has meaning, it flows, it swells, it's got an entry, it's omote ura. For people like Taransan and me, this is, you give me this block and that's it. The world can be coming to an end outside my window and I just don't care. I am gonna happy camper dive and live with this. He and I, both of us, we could happily go back in time to an era of no dentistry, no good food, no whatever, and just happily be a carver and do this kind of work. I think. No dentistry, I'm not so sure about that. No <laughs> dentistry sounds <laughs> like, yeah, that's the, whatever, the whatever. big drawback. We want to do this, and that's one of the things we do in our own job. We try and build ourselves a career that will let us do this for pleasure. For pleasure. The rich black as well. Yeah, and so, so. The black, black, once or twice, I don't know. Could be just printed just once. It's pretty thin paper. It could be a single impression, could be two. There is so much skill and knowledge and know-how and technique wrapped up into these two sheets of paper. Without exaggeration, there's like 200 years of accumulated knowledge and know-how wrapped up in these little sheets of paper. 60 bucks. Bokashi everywhere. Everywhere. How much time? I got how many impressions? One, two, three. Oh, don't interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we now have to get to work. Aimi-san is waiting in the next room for Taran-san to come and join her, and i got to get busy in the shop downstairs. It's been a bit of a mixed stream today. Thank you very much. Can you find it? Can you just zoom in into the... Uh, the the yeah, never-ending Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Go ahead and zoom in there, and we will now sign off. Okay, guys, thanks very much. I'll see you next time. It'll be a Monday morning for me. Not sure what work I'll be doing. Thanks, everybody, and see you next time. I think you're taking us too far down the, down the hole. <laughs> Back up a bit.
There we go. There we go. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I'm going to say see you later, Tom. I'm not going to see you later. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. See you.